<clears throat> All right, so we have a five minute chart on the left hand side. That's the US 500 for folks that are tracking the CFD that can't trade with the, well, not trade, but tape read the E mini SP 500, which is the futures contract chart on the right hand side. So I'm trying something new today. I'm going to be very cautious because I'm trying to get comfortable with both charts up here. So usually this would be a very big distraction for me. So I'm going to try to do my best to focus on the ES so you guys can see the difference you know, as close as you can real time because I know there's this very small delay between what I'm saying and what you receive on your device through YouTube's broadcasting. <clears throat> All right, so I don't have any annotations on the US 500 CFD chart. You're going to have to track that respectively as we look at and compare both. I don't know, that might not be satisfying for some of you, but I apologize. I, I, I'm not going to be able to do all the plate spinning that some of you want me to do. And if you look at the ES chart on the right hand side, again, this is a five minute chart. We'll drop down to one in respective lower time frame if there's a necessity for it, but right now there isn't. The opening price, Sunday, for ES came in at 4104, I'm sorry, 4105.00, and the closing price on Friday came in at 4099.50. The difference, it's a gap higher. So this is new week gap opening, new week opening gap rather. And the midpoint between those two price points is this heavy dashed red line. You can see we came down to that beautifully so far this morning, showing a willingness to want to respect that level. So everything so far is delivered as I teach it. I'm watching this volume imbalance in here, and I'm also watching the buy side liquidity resting above the high here on ES. Now, apart from the new week opening gap levels on the chart and a few things I've added from the daily, I'm going to try to keep the chart clean as I can. Now be mindful that where ES is trading right now, it's higher than Friday's close. So there's a premium in respect to the opening price versus where we closed on Friday. So what I mean by that is this, see that gap? So we're gapping up here when it closed down here. So it's usually gonna create some kind of a draw down into the price action. The levels I like first is the high on Friday session, then all the wicks in here study that. There really isn't any inefficiency in here on the five minute chart. So if we drop down to a one minute chart, I know you want me to be busy with that US 500 chart to the left, but we're really early in the session and there's nothing here that I want to participate in yet or would want to participate in. So here's that gap, and we want to see it likely try to draw into that. It doesn't mean it will, but that's the first expectation when we look at the opening. So we're watching the opening range. As a reminder, tomorrow is CPI, so my expectations today are rather low. But I'll try to work out a range, and you can observe it real time. Maybe get a five handle run, you can study that live before the close of this morning session. Now that 410, I'm sorry, 4111 or 4111 line that you're seeing here on the right hand side chart. 
what that is is the consequent encroachment of the daily candle from February 7th, 2023. The wick, the lower wick on the bottom of the candle, uh, that level is what's being a, a non, uh, and the annotated right there. And just above that, should we get some kind of a, see now I like this right here, this looks like it's failing. And reach down here to the lower end of the gap. Do not take any of this as trade advice, please. All you're doing is tape reading, you're observing, trying to get a feel for what the market's likely to do. There's liquidity resting at the 4102.25 level. That's in the form of sell side. We have relative equal lows here, here, and here. Now I'll drop down on the one minute chart on the US 500 chart on the left hand side. So if you look at the high here, it formed down to the midpoint of the new week opening gap. That is consequent encroachment. So what I'd like to look for is a price run that moves higher, that can be faded, or I expect to see it fail, or maybe create a sell signal, something to that effect. And if we can get through, and there's nothing saying it's gonna do it yet, but if it gets below the consequent encroachment level of 4102.25, if it breaks through that, that becomes, in my mind, a fulcrum point. And then if it trades down to the low end of the new week opening gap, which was Friday's closing price, if you can trade through that, we would look for the first objective on the downside would be 4098.50. And any further animation to the downside would be 4094.75. And frankly, that would be as far as I would expect the morning session to move. Simply because, not to say it couldn't move and not to say it's going to go down there either because it could go and run up here and take out 4110. <clears throat> I have nothing in here that I like. All you're doing is observing. Uh, with the expectation the CPI is going to be the, the big monster move for the week. Uh, that's the reason why cautions advised here today. And not try to get all of what you were hoping to make for the week all inside this one day. Okay, we trade back to consequent encroachment of the new week opening gap. Does it want to drive underneath that aggressively and expand down into 4099.50? 50 year old bones cracking. <laughs> On the US 500 chart, I apologize. Like I said, this is a an opportunity for me to try to grow a little bit more as a mentor here, trying to show both vehicles. The 4087.6 level and 4083.9 level, uh, that would be my expectations. It should be break below and get animated below the the low here at 4091.2 on the US 500. This is what that chart is over here on the left hand side. You're hearing our recycling truck coming through to pick up our recycling stuff. Apologize if it's coming through in the audio. Okay, returning back into the high end of the new week opening gap.
So far, nothing really stands out with the uh, relationship between the NASDAQ and the ES at the lows of the day so far after 9.30's opening. So no, no SMT diversions there. So I don't see any reason for it to draw our attention to the NQ. And since I'm primarily showing you one instrument throughout this year, I'm teaching you to be a specialist on the one, so that way you're not jumping around, because all the price action you would ever need can be found in one asset. Okay, nice run away from that 4102.25 level. All of this is the opening range. So the first 15 to 30 minutes, there shouldn't be a whole lot of emphasis placed on any of that. When we get into the 10 o'clock hour, usually there's algorithms that start running in that time frame, usually 950 to 1010. And we'll look at what buy side or sell side liquidity and any inefficiencies that reside at that time. Right now, all we're doing is trying to get a feel for what it wants to do. And too early to tell really with high probability. I know some of you gamblers out there already have a clue what you want to see it do. It doesn't mean it's going to do it. So we had a run pre-market for 9.30. Made an attempt to get down to Friday's close after opening at 9.30. Found some support at the consequent encroachment of the new week opening gap. Buy side now is in the crosshairs. Now, what I'm interested in seeing is how we how we trade. Should we take out the high at seven twenty seven candle? So if it runs through that buy side, how do we deliver after that? On oh, your bear with me one second. On your 15 minute time frame, the February 9th, 2023, 12 colon 30 or 1230 candle, there is a sell sign balance buy sign efficiency. You want to extend that to the right. If we run through with a lot of momentum, momentum on the upside through 4116, we could see 4122 and a half. Just be, you know, just be mindful that's what we could see. But if we get above that 41.15, reject that and start to break down, then I would look for it to try to return back to Friday's closing price. Because all of this right here could be just the Judas swing for the morning. What makes me ex extremely cautious and not have any strong convictions on where I think it's going to go is because we have CPI tomorrow. And I'm kind of in my notes in front of me, in my pad right here. Real bold letters, CPI tomorrow. Don't get pip jump. So don't fall in love with something you think is going to be an explosive, big, huge move. Just look for your bread and butter setups and be content with it. And tomorrow, wait for the carnage to come.
so far, NASDAQ's basically on par with the highs as well. So nothing's really, nothing's really standing out as a, an obvious run here. Still 50-50. And when you're new, and you're just ready to do something, you feel like you want to just push the button and see what happens. But you know what they say, when you F around, you find out. <laughs> You don't want to find out when you're on the wrong side of the market move on a day that's already not likely to do very much for precision. That's my view on it. Now, I would like to see it rip higher only because we came back down into this breaker here. This is this up close candle. We came into it, also traded inside and completely repriced to the low of this buy side and down sell side efficiency. So 41.18. That'd be a nice reach above for that buy side. But anything just piercing through this is enough. Now, US 500, if you notice that, it's already done it on the left hand side, but futures have yet to do it. <clears throat> and what you're doing while watching price with me like this is you want to train your eye to number one, look for runs. That makes sense to you. What pattern from the content that I teach, which one do you trust more? Or which one are you able to see as clearly as possible watching a small time frame like this? But don't think that it only works on these lower time frames because everything I'm showing you with these candles on one minute basis is absolutely the same thing if you were looking at an hourly chart or a four hour chart or a daily chart. It just requires a lot more time for that candle to complete and close and start a new one. And obviously the ranges would be much larger. Which for some of you is probably what you're looking for. You want big runs. You want high R multiples. You can use the lower time frame entries and trade with the higher time frame PD arrays and get these extrapolated returns versus the small minute theoretical risk and it looks like it's just crouching right below that buy side liquidity pool at 41.15 like I said US 500 on the left hand side that's that that's what that chart is it has already whipped through it and tapped into its buy side ES on the right hand side has yet to do it so since we had this run here, I'll kind of put it on the chart so you can see as much as I don't want to do it because it's a distraction to me. That is your bullish breaker. That traded down into a buy side and balance sell side efficiency. So buy side's about ready to get ripped through. So from here to here, it's a five handle run. You would want to see it expand a little bit more than what it's already done here through 4115. And when it does that, you want to. If it does, I could be wrong. But if it does, and should it, you want to screenshot your chart there and have this as a framework because we were looking for it to trade down. I mentioned the breaker, buy side and balance, sell side efficiency. I want to see speed and distance here. It should rip through that now. Watch this wick right here. I'm watching the midpoint of that Wisconsin encroachment. We've already tapped it here, so I want to see it expand through. There you go, like that. I'd like to see it print 4118. Now the same thing I did with the downside objectives. We're using the FIB for like, like targeting. 
what you're going to look well, what you're looking for is price runs that have retracements and a buy side liquidity above where market price is if not if you're looking for bullish runs higher how far can you go that, that's one of the things that i was trying to teach last week can you see this high here we we're using it with that low and if we went below this low here yes we wick through it but did it really trade through it and show limits to go lower you know they don't just tap through it for the sell side if it's a fulcrum point it's going to run right through it like this high here now becomes a fulcrum point from this low so from that low up to that high there you can see why i was looking for 4118 and it's just simply me looking at it for years seeing that range and i'm multiplying it between that low to that high what's a what's a one standard deviation of the same range higher from this high here if this high is broken to the upside and we come back down into a bullish breaker what makes this a bullish breaker this up close candle here we have a low a high and lower low. why am i not using the wicks because they're gaps i'm taking right back into the price action that is what showing the bodies the bodies tell you the story the wicks is where the damage is done so i'm cutting through candles to take you to the narrative of what should be expected in price action even in a sloppy morning like it is here it still will, will talk to you i don't have the 4118 delivered yet it may not do so and it would not be a terrible upsetting thing for me because like i mentioned when we first started this stream my expectations are very very low because of the volatility that's expected tomorrow there's a lot of traders that are sitting on their hands today and they're just taking today off they're not worrying about today because they know there's going to be a lot of movement tomorrow it's going to be a lot of displacement in price and it's going to create all kinds of sentiments you know big runs higher big runs lower inefficiencies fair value gaps liquidity pools above and below the marketplace it's going to be a lot of interest then and that's what you want to you want to wait for that displacement it's like when you walk up to a smooth pond you know and it's smooth you want to wait for that rock to be thrown in there and it creates ripples there's action there's something to, to, to keep your eye on and watch there's movement right now we're just seeing, you know, it's just a little bit of movement. It's nothing really terribly exciting right now. But should this high be taken out, like it does here, notice the difference how this one runs through, closes through, and really rips higher, then comes back down into what? This buy side imbalance, so it's inefficient, this, this shaded area. I'm going to change this color just so you can see it by contrast. Not that I want it red, but we'll do that. It comes at 4118 level. So we traded down into that. So there's two PD arrays in the form of a discount because price is here, it trades down into this up close candle here, which is the highest up close candle between the low here and the lower low here. So we traded through it and our attention goes right into that candle. And we have the buy side balance with some efficiency. So trading into that here sets the stage for a price run. This becomes a fulcrum point. We can use the wicks for those types of things, but not for breakers. We don't we don't use it for that. And since the buy side liquidity is 4115 even, that's what we annotated. Can we use this objective here? Sure, you can use that as a partial. Like if you took a long in here, or for your annotations, you annotate that as this offered a wonderful opportunity to get and not even take the buy side that would be resting at 4115. But you'd be looking for, in my opinion, the run to 4118 simply because it's above the buy side liquidity, the, the high here. Let me show you. It's above this high here. So this this level here would be okay for a partial. But in my opinion, if I were in this trade and I didn't have the uncertainty of what we're going to see today versus what we're going to get tomorrow a lot of movement for cpi by having the economic calendar in your in your, in your wheel in your windshield you're looking ahead preparing for what's available in terms of risk and, and where the volatility is going to come in you have to keep your expectations low ahead of the day of cpi it might create all kinds of wonderful opportunities but for me my risk is paired back a lot my interest in taking a, a setup is going to be extremely more picky 
Like I want to be more selective in what I'm wanting to trade on because I'm already in an environment that's not likely to deliver as precise as I would normally expect it to because there isn't a lot of participants coming in today, whereas tomorrow after CPI comes in, there's going to be this big mad rush to get in there chasing something. So these higher highs that's formed on ES here on the right hand side, uh, it looks like NASDAQ has supported that run, so nothing in terms of distribution really if we're looking at S&T. Now watch that volume of balance here on both the US 500. Uh, I've noticed that they don't really respect them so much or as precisely as in the futures market. So even if you can't trade the US futures market contracts, like for ES or NQ, it's worth it for you if you are. Let me just do that. It's worth it for you to get the data to track these US markets. Because if you're trading the CFDs like the US 500, US 100, and US 30, you're going to get more trustworthy data if you're looking at the futures market. So I'm going to take this off here. It has already accomplished it. <clears throat> How about that Super Bowl last night? <laughs> That's actually the first Super Bowl game I sat and watched. Actually, it's the first football game I ever sat and watched. Um, let's see if we can get that 41.18. Now, now we're above that volume and balance. <clears throat> pardon, pardon me. Do we get a touch of that volume and balance again and then send it to 41.18? Watch that, or if there's a rip right through 4118 and go into that 15 minute imbalance I mentioned. I would have liked to see that candle come down and touch the line and balance. That would have been nice to see that before taking out this high. And then rip into 41.18, and a half. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to see it now. And why am I saying that? Because we've already started the run and we went above the bodies of these candles. To now I consider this series of two down close candles as a bullish order block. I want to see a support price around here. You can come back to this candle's hot, but I'd like to see that stay open now. See that? You can see that right there stay open. It can touch the opening of that candle and then rip into 4118, 4121 and a half, and then. When you're looking at ES chart, you want to have 4133.75 noted as well. That's the high end of the 15 minute fair value gap, which is a SIBI. I'll show you on the chart in a minute. I'm just looking at my other chart here because I'm. There's a 4118. It's the 15 minute candle at February 9th, 2023, at 1230. The time I don't go for there. So if you look at the 15 minute time frame. Right here. 
So if you're looking too close and you have your candles you so drilled in, you won't be able to see this or appreciate the levels that it's going to likely reach into. So we're going to draw up in that 15 minute. There you go. And you want to get your level in the middle, which is constant encouragement. So 4128 even. Have that annotated on your chart as well. And then when I have something like this, you want to split it once more. And you'll have a gradient of four levels. So I'm going to look at 4125.25 and 4128.25. If it were to get a blow off, move to the upside. This fair value gap on the high end here, 4133.75. That would be my morning session high objective. Should it reach that, I'd be content and move to the sidelines. I'm already feeling as the US 500s not being advantageous. Frequently, I know some of you would like me to do. It's very difficult for me to focus, I apologize, but at least you can see the difference in what the U.S. futures contract is doing in respect of highs and lows. I'll pull the 15 up on the U.S. 500. So you have 4118.6 for your consequent encouragement of the fair value gap on US 500. So just make sure you have that measure on your chart for those that are following along on the CFD on the right hand side. <clears throat> so you can see how watching in the morning and using the opening range, not rushing, not trying to get in there and make a decision right away. Uh, these these types of price runs, they're not essential for you to be a part of, especially while you're learning. <clears throat> Can you guys give me a shout back at me on Twitter if everything's coming through audibly like a my audio is okay. The chart is it chart clear? Give me a five by five tweet to me if everything's good visually and audibly, please. Thank you, appreciate that. Now let's go back to that fulcrum point I was showing you when we're looking for expansions. Because we're already through the buy side and we're inside of that old inefficiency on the 15 minute time frame from February 9th. So since we're in between the low and the consequent encouragement or midpoint of that 15 minute gap on the 9th, the 1230 candle on the 15 minute candle respectively for that day, February 9th, and you have this level here. What you're going to do is draw your fib from the low up to the high of the wick because we can use wicks for measurements of range and targeting. 
the only time I'm using a lick for entries is when I'm using consequent encroachment or the quarter point of that wick. Those, those are two most important levels for me on a candle's wick or a candle's tail, you know, the part that goes below the candle. This is usually referred to as a tail and the wick is usually the upper portion above the high. So we have a standard deviation of negative two here at 4126.25, then consequent encroachment. And then we have uh, 4130.50. And then negative three standard deviations at 41.34 and a half, which is outside the spectrum of the February 9th fair value gap. So I'm not really interested in that one because that's, in my opinion, a little overzealous for today. If we can hit consequent encroachment, that's satisfying for me for the morning session. Now, looking at the run from 9.50, right in here. So the market trades back into an order block and 950 to 1010, that's a macro, is likely to do what? We were looking for a price to reach into 4118, 4121 and a half, and then also into this 15 minute fair value gap. Does price support it here? That's what I'm watching at the low end of that 15 minute fair value gap. If it starts to run, as soon as it hits this level, should it do so? I don't know if it's going to. Should it do that? You want to screenshot your chart as soon as it does that. And then log it and annotate what you've observed this morning. You're managing and developing patience when you're tape reading. There's no there's no animation in my voice. I'm not terribly excited or shocked. I'm not risking anything. I don't care about being right or wrong. All I'm doing is pointing out where the market's likely to go. When it fails to do certain things, I'm making that observation with you, sharing what it should be doing, what it shouldn't do. And we're still, as much as this might look entertaining to some of you, this is still very, very ugly price action. It still can be traded, obviously, but it's ugly. And when the charts get cleaner, watch this little inefficiency in here. When price cleans up a little bit more, and it will, you'll see how fun and precise things are. It just becomes really, really easy to see the setup. They can't, they can't hide it. Not that they're really trying to hide it here. I don't want you to read too much into them when I say that. It's just hard to ferret out the really low risk, high probability setups in environments like this because you can get a lot of chop retracements, a lot more movement against your position entries than you would like to see in like easier market conditions, which you'll understand later in the year. By contrast, days like this versus days where you see me out on the move where it should move, where it shouldn't move, and it just takes off, runs. Real nice and sharp, no real deep retracements, almost like immediately in the, in the money. That's a low resistance liquidity run signature. So that's really what I'm trying to teach you this year. But we have to work in every individual daily range to fully appreciate what it is that makes a low resistance liquidity run. When I first started teaching my older students, um, they, they were hard pressed to understand what I meant by that because we were doing live sessions and I'm trying to communicate the signatures, what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. And when you have a, a group of people that come into this, want to be spoon fed, give me a signal to buy, give me a signal to sell. Where's my targets? Where's my stop at? Uh, it, then that doesn't satisfy right away. And when it doesn't satisfy a, a student or a viewer like that, they have a hard line opinion. Oh, it's a scam. This doesn't work. It's, it was never promised as a signal service. It's to teach you how to read price action. And that's what I'm promoting here. That's all I'm doing is helping you read the tape. If you can read price action, you're going to learn what your favorite setup is. By default, it's going to happen. So what I just did here was we had a retracement down into a fair value gap. What kind of fair value gap is this? Buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Up close candles, 
that create a Faraday gap is a BISI, B-I-S-I, by sign balance, sell side efficiency. We had the sell side offered here on this candle. This candle's high comes in at 4120.50. This candle here, its low comes in at 4120.25, one quarter of a point, one tick outside the Faraday gap. That's permissible, that's reasonable, it's not upsetting anything, but that's also the signatures of a day like this, where I mentioned before, the precision is going to be slightly skewed because tomorrow is the real event. That's the real event, that's the thing everybody's waiting for, so it's going to be a little bit less perfect on a day like this, much like the reasons why, why I try to justify why I don't trade on the Thursday and Friday of non-farm payroll because it's like this, where it can be just a little bit outside the lines that I like to see it color inside of. But what I'm showing you here is, should we run higher and take out the high, look what they left. And that can be, so we have relatively equal highs here. To me, I view that as engineering liquidity. And don't be surprised if they take it below this low now, because that'll sell the idea that this is a top or a resistance level. And if we take it below this low here and we trace down into this fair bag up here, look at all the back and forth in here. See all that? That to me is a balanced price range. So meaning, as much as I'd like to see this stay open and act as a breakaway gap, if I was bullish, I don't have, I have no position on it. But I'm making the case for arguing if I was already long down here, I'd want to see this left open, do all of the reaccumulation of new longs here, and send it above these highs. But I'm willing to accept the fact that because they've now priced in a relative equal high, these two highs being basically the same, if they take this short-term low out here, then it can come back into here, which is, again, one of the reasons why I teach not to trail your stop loss up because you don't know when these fair value gaps are going to form. You're too new. You have no idea when they're going to form. I usually have a pretty good idea where they're at because I'm familiar with the range I'm trading in. And because of signatures like I taught last week and before where using the PD array matrix when it's in a premium to a discount, just like there's a threshold when you don't want to add new pyramid entries, there's also a threshold that you want to see price move beyond before you consider moving your stop loss up. And I'll cover that this year, don't worry, but we're not even in the entry points yet. Right now you're just trying to reprice because if you don't know where it's going to go or where it's going to try to gravitate to, it doesn't matter what your entry strategy is going to be, it's going to be probably wrong. But if we can trade above these relative equal highs, we have a standard deviation of negative 0 0.5, which is just short of consequent encroachment, this level here. So at 4127.50 and then 4129.75. So let's assume that it does find its way up to this level, midpoint of the 15 minute gap on February 9th. This would be my objective for the morning session, and I'd be content. If it goes through it and expands, we always have the probabilities of it reaching to the high end. But I don't believe that's something that we should look for this morning. I, and I could be proven wrong. But if it goes through consequent encroachment, it could go to this level here. So what I'm always doing is I'm getting measurements, not doing classical fib ratios to get, you know, like targets. Like you see anybody that teaches Fibonacci, they'll teach you fib ratios that supposedly the market's you know, moving towards. These levels here are standard deviations. And you're going to find that they're going to serve you better over time when you understand the narrative of where price should go and with liquidity and coupled with inefficiencies when they exist in price. In plain terms, these are going to be better for you than the classical retail ratios that Fibonacci levels are usually attributed to. Which is why you see people troll me over the years. We don't even use a Fibonacci rate. Right? <laughs> You're right. I don't use it like retail. I'm proud of it. So in your mind, you should see these relative equal highs here as a buy side liquidity pool. Now we took out that short term low. So anyone that's being short or going short, they now have their stop loss right above here. What kind of stop loss? Buy stops, which is why I write buy side liquidity. Oops, got that one. 
still spell them, but my eyes are old. And it needs to be on the top left. And let's say large. Okay, so we want to keep this Faraday gap annotated. Just extend it forward. And in here, why do you sometimes use lines and then sometimes you use the rectangles? When it's in close proximity to one another like this, it helps me keep my frame of mind when I'm teaching you. So as I'm annotating charts, if I'm a trade example I'm showing you, I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to get confused as to what I'm looking at. Because if I have too many things on my chart, it takes away the purity of reading price. So like I said, it's very difficult for me to keep my focus and talk to you about what it is it should do and shouldn't do. But I mentioned if we take out that short-term low here, we can dip down inside this very vague gap. So far, we're seeing institutional order flow entry drill, which is a partial entry into a gap which is a fair day gap here between this candle's high, this candle's low. What kind of gap specifically is this? A buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Buy side was offered. It's inefficient in what? Sell side. But if it's bullish and they're going to run on retail that are, in my opinion, being introduced to a potential shorting opportunity for them. And they trust when they see these types of things here, that double top type thing. It looks like the, the textbook version of what? Resistance. And if they drop it down below a short-term low, what do they see that as? That's a market structure shift, or it's a break in market structure. And that may be the it may be true, it might happen here. But I like to look for periods where there's an arm wrestling match between these two categories of traders. Yes, this is reasonable if the trade back down in here. It didn't even go to the midpoint of this fair value gap, which would be consequent encouragement because it's a gap, not a candle or order block. If it was an order block, it would be mean threshold. But because it's being identified as an imbalance, we didn't even trade down to the midpoint of that. So let me show you what I mean by this. Between this candle's high and that candle's low, we have a price point level of 4118.75. So we didn't get down to that level here on this candle. This candle's low comes in at 4119 even. So it's one quarter of a point higher than that of the midpoint of the gap, which is 4118.75. Because it didn't even go down to midpoint, this is viewed as institutional order flow entry drill. I know it's a mouthful, but it just means that if you're bullish, if you think prices are likely to go higher, I'm not suggesting that you should be long, but if you are expecting prices to move higher and you see a fair value gap, and you want to see a level of imbalance like this stay open, which would be the argument if you were bullish. Okay, if you're bullish, you want to see it try to reach up in the consequent encouragement because we have time. Look what time it is still. In New York time, that's where your chart should always be on trading view. It's 10, 16. So we have a little bit of time left still, and it can expand up into to take the buy side out, up to it, through it, and maybe hit consequent encouragement. And that would be a wrap for the morning session, and I would consider this a, a profitable endeavor over charts. But because we only came down partially in here, the idea of leaving some of this open, and I, I don't recall now because I've, I've been looking at this chart on the left-hand side and going back and forth and trying to keep my thoughts collected as I describe what it is I'm looking for. I don't recall, but I think I did, and you can correct me if I didn't. I believe I said I want to see this fair value gap left open before we see this traded through and maybe even hit the consequent encouragement. If I didn't say that, just know that I would have liked to have said that because that's what I would, I would expect. But I think I did say something to that effect. But again, you can go back and listen to the recording. Because I mentioned this, how I'd like to see this as a breakaway gap. So now I know I, know I said it because I want to see that stay open. Breakaway gap is just like a, a signature where we can see price really snapping higher and having no real immediate interest to come back in to reprice over top of all of this. That's sometimes very indicative of seeing higher prices, but because we've met a 15 minute premium array in the form of that fair value gap, we dug into what? Did we meet the lower quarter of that?
just fell short of the quarter level of that fair value gap on the 50 minute time frame. We keep coming back into this fair value gap. The fact that it's doing what it's doing right here is also another reason why I'm teaching and preaching to you caution on a day prior to like news events like non-farm payroll, uh, FOMC, and like tomorrow's CPI number. This type of price action is a classic delivery in price where it's just a lot of hurry up, move something, move somewhere, and then chop around a little bit and drive you nuts because you just want to get out of the trade. You just want to get the trade to go to your target, be done, and be over with. Unfortunately, when you're trading ahead of high impact news drivers like CPI number tomorrow, non farm payroll, FOMC, something to that effect, uh, you'll get trading conditions like this, which makes it high resistance. So, high resistance liquidity runs. We're looking for a run into the imbalance midpoint at 41.28 even. That's my objective for the moment. Should it hit that? I'm going to do moves like Jagger in front of my wife. She's going to be like, whatever, you didn't take the trade. <laughs> but for, for learning purposes, you'll see that this is what it's like to be delivering in high resistance liquid, liquidity run signatures or conditions, not signatures, where it, it's really, really frustrating sometimes before it gets to your objectives. And another one would be how we failed just one quarter of a point, one tick, before getting to the quarter level of that 15-minute fair value gap. On another day, it would have ripped right on through 41.28 even and probably even climbed all the way through to the high end of it being this thing okay but all of this right here is what you're going to endure if you force yourself to trade in conditions that are high resistance high resistance doesn't mean like like support and resistance it means it's resisting clean price runs where they just run big ranges speed efficient run right to where you want it to go that's how you want to trade. You want to trade in those conditions. But as a neophyte, someone new to trading and not really versed in price action, even if you are profitably in trading for a long time, it's probably something you really never paid attention to. There are times when the market gives you these very stagnant types of conditions where, yeah, if you, if you have a really wide stop from your entry, don't ever really move it and just endure through the entire session or the entire day, your targets may get hit. But because you're not sitting in front of the chart watching every, indi every individual minute candle, it will be very frustrating. And for a new student, what I do is I take them into the charts and show them by contrast, this is a high resistance liquidity run condition. This is what we can expect and what you would endure. So that way they can feel what it feels like to be in that. Like it's a lot of time. It's moving very, very lethargic in this small little range before taking out buy side liquidity. Whereas you would have rather wanted to see what? It trade down to that blue rectangle and then volley higher, ripping through the buy side and touch 41.28 and we swing our checkered flag and we're all happy. That is not an immediate gratification in conditions like this. You get that type of immediate gratification, immediate feedback that you're on side, the right side of the marketplace, in low resistance liquidity runs where it doesn't do a lot of this consolidation. It just, it's in a hurry to get somewhere. It's in a hurry to get there quickly. And if you're on the right side of the marketplace in those conditions, it's very satisfying. There's nothing more satisfying than that. See how it just went up there and just got real close to the buy side. And then we're pulling back down to the low end of the fair value gap. This is exactly, this is the stuff you wanna record in your journal. You don't wanna say, this is so damn frustrating. <laughs> you don't wanna do that. But you do want to observe the length of time that it takes and maybe ultimately a failure. It doesn't mean it's going to go. I don't know for certain if it's going to go above that 4125 and clean that box out right now. They could leave it just like that, retrace, and then later on in the lunch hour or on the other side of the lunch hour, wipe, wipe through that buy side liquidity. That's the problem that you're going to encounter trading in these environments versus when the market's really obviously loaded up to go in one direction over another it's one-sided is how i teach it if you can justify the trade only in one direction that is my ict definition of high probability and that high probability condition 
is what we refer to as salad days, easy day trading, like easy, 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 get in, get your money, go home. Whereas now when you're in these types of environments, you're working for it. And at the end of these days, even when you're profitable, you feel like you've worked out. You, you feel like you're, you're drained. You just want to you know, take a nap, relax, you, you not even want to look at a chart because it's drained you because you're taking a lot of time and energy and you're burning a lot of calories. Your brain's doing a lot of calculations. What if thinking you're anxious, you're running all kinds of scenarios. What if I don't take my partial here? What if I don't you know, roll my stop up here? And what if it comes against me and digs in and takes away 40% of my profit? You know, how well I feel if I don't take my profit here? What happens if I do take my profit here? And it runs the buy side and goes all the way to the top of the fair value. That's what you're going to encounter. And you want to observe all that. That's the whole point of me sitting with you over top of these charts, because that is how you learn, because you're going to discover a lot of things about yourself that you probably thought you were very strong. Your will was strong. You're very you know, disciplined. You think you're disciplined. You think that you know what you're doing. But when you're forced in front of the charts like this, they are a mirror. And they're going to show you who you really are. They're going to show you all your imperfections. As wonderful as they are that make you unique, you have to refine many of them as a trader and keep them from manifesting themselves in your charts or your trades. And that's not easy to do. And I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to be successful for everyone in that regard because all of you have your own individual personalities. And there's character flaws that all of us have. They may be viewed as a cute little quirky thing that your spouse or significant other likes about you. But in the markets, they will serve you your rear end. So you have to be mindful of that and understand that a weakness is not something that makes you a bad trader. It just means that you have something to improve upon. And you have to either develop coping skills for some things, which my coping skill that I needed right away when I first learned how to trade was the fear of getting in. Like I needed to know that what I was using to get in the trade was worth even employing. I discovered I was over here. Sorry, I know some of you were mad at me. Can you just go over to the one inch chart so you can see what's doing? You can see what the US 500 chart's doing on your end if you follow along with that. As long as you can see what the US futures market, the ES on the right hand side is doing comparatively, you should be fine. Did I do this? No, I don't think I did. Buy signs about to get spent. Now what this one here. All right, so we got forty one eighteen point six for US five hundred. See what ES is doing? See how it's just sitting there crouching below? This is the type of stuff that's gonna drive you nuts in these environments. You're gonna be like, come on, like the other day when I was in there and I was looking for 4101.50, that was when my limit order was. I called the high tick, but the, the difference between the bid and the ask, there, that's what we're looking for. See that? It feels like a, well, let me not use that word. It feels like a sweet release when you're in these trades and it finally gives that to you. You know what I mean by that. I'm not gonna go there. And we still didn't deliver the 4128 level. This is again one of those classic frustrations. But you would have a screenshot of this, and this would be like a partial. And you would annotate in your chart. You want to record how much time you endured watching all of it come back down into levels that I outlined for you, that it should do certain things, certain classic uh, characteristics that these PD arrays should do and should they deliver in price. Notice how we came down to this down close candle here, right on that. Note also in your annotations how this candle went right down to the low end of the fair value path. That's perfect, see that? So it, the high resistance liquidity runs are not exempt of precision elements that I'm teaching you. It just means that you'll have a lot of this choppiness in between them. And sometimes they'll color outside the lines like it does here or here. And that's fine, because I taught last week. It's like when you're cutting the grass, remember I was giving you that analogy? You're cutting the grass, gentlemen. 
you cut through and you turn the mower around and you go overlap what you've already cut and what is uncut. It's that way you're making sure there's no seams in the lawn, no little mohawks where there's a little strip of grass that's still too high. That's what the market's doing here. It's overshooting the fair value gap, making sure there's no seam here. Down into this imbalance, overlaps it a little bit. That's what makes it institutional order flow. Because I mentioned I want to see this stay open before we get to here and preferably into the consequent encroachment 4128, then any dip down here should not be viewed. And this is very scary when you're first learning. I understand it's like I, most of the questions I get is how do I know? Like, how do I know that, to trust this not getting a stop out? How do I know it's not going to go through that high and take my stop loss when I'm taking a short using the 2022 model that's all I need to? The fact that you're walking through this with me live right now is going to answer that at the end of the year. So for some of you, before we even get through three months, you're going to know, oh, yeah, it makes sense now. It's experience. That's all. But because you're afraid to fail or you're lazy, you're not doing this. You're wanting to trade. You're pushing a demo account. You're trying to get funded. You're trying to do these funded account challenges. There's your 4128. So you want to screenshot that right there. And I'm going to tease the shit out of my wife now later on. <laughs> I did it again, honey. But the, the elements of what we're seeing here are not going to be this frustrating when we're in one-sided markets. And you're going to see the difference of, of this versus what we're looking at now, which still can deliver your trades. It's not, I'm not saying that you can't trade these, but it's really important to understand that you're going to work harder and you're going to be worrying more. What's the upper portion? I should have had a level on that. I apologize. Let's go back and add that now. So between consequent encroachment of the fair value gap on the 50-minute time frame on February 9th, uh, your next objective for ES would be 41.31 even. And then there you go. Uh, for me personally, this would close my morning session. I would be done. I would close my trades. I would square everything and I would relax the rest of the day. I'd watch some Netflix, Netflix and chill, okay? Or as we like to call it, chicken and <laughs> fill in the blanks. Relax, enjoy your time away from the charts. Don't force yourself to be looking at for another move because there's time left. Just simply because it's 1030 and you have all the rest of today, don't look at that and think, you know, I'm wasting my time by not being in these charts. No, you're pushing too hard. And you might have an edge right now that I'm helping you hone. And when I tell you to stop, when I tell you to stop, close the charts and walk away. If you don't do that, you know what you're missing out on? Developing discipline and patience and overcoming what? Fear of missing out. I don't care what it's going to do the rest of the day. I don't care. Because I know what I use and what I'm teaching all of you is going to repeat every single day. But I also know that there's going to be times where the markets are going to be really not favoring me to, to participate. And we've watched something pan out this morning. Uh, it, it's not about being right. Initially, if you look at what I gave last night and well, yesterday, I gave my pre-market analysis what I was like this, what I was liking to see, or what I would rather would have liked to see uh, develop in, in price action. I mentioned that if we had a higher gap. If we get higher, that means we're probably going to do what? We're going to go up into those imbalances that we're trading into right now. Go back and look at the pre-market analysis. It's not plan A, plan B, because I don't know which one's going to be really there when we open up on Sunday. And I don't know while I'm sleeping during the London session, Sunday night into Monday morning, my Monday morning. I don't know what it's going to deliver and what it's going to provide me. So when I woke up rather early this morning, I looked at it and I tweeted to you. I said, okay, I'm going to require 9.30's opening. But going back to my pre-market analysis, what was the filter? If we have a gap higher opening, I want to see it try to trade back down towards what? Friday's closing price. We tried. We got real close to it here. The low came in at uh, 4101 and a half, but it didn't get to 49 or 4099 something, whatever this. This level is here, 4099.50.
So that's what I would have rather seen. And you heard me talking about it live. I said, let's just see if you can get down there. It didn't do it. What did it do? It ripped tire, took a, a run above this short-term high, and we outlined the buy side and balance here. We talked about the breaker here. We talked about how it's going to likely dig in and then finally re reach up into the 41.18 level, which it did here. Then I said 41.21 and a half, which it did here. Then we're going to dig into that 15-minute fair value gap, which we did here. We're going to go to the quarter point. We failed to do it here until that candle there, and then get up into consequent virtue, which is the objective I would have. But if you're holding on to a trade and not listening to me, your partial should be taken off here, and then maybe leave another one for this here. But I would not be trading over top of ICT talking over price action. You're going to get hurt one day when I do it wrong, and I don't want you to have that experience. I want you to just simply observe, listen to me. Each one of these are a laboratory experiment. They're teaching you how you're going to feel without any memory, without any kind of right or wrong. Every time I'm talking to you like this, who's at risk of being wrong? I am. So it frees your mind of all of that concern. You're getting to watch me walk out here without a safety net. And I'm teaching you the very things that I've taught on that YouTube channel. I'm proving efficacy. I'm teaching you that these concepts absolutely work. I'm teaching you that there are periods when you're not going to know what the market's going to do. And that's okay. It's okay to have that moment, not knowing what it's going to do. Because if you sit around and you wait for the market to tell you what it wants to do, it's like it is here. Even though this is high resistance conditions, it's still going to likely deliver to our levels, but it, you have to endure a whole lot more pausing, more retracements, stagnation in price action before it gets there. And that's what I really want you to focus on and annotate that in your in your charts for your journal today. Not saying this was a bitch to sit through. This was so hard. This was so stressful. You don't want to use those terms. You want to say things like, it was surprising to see how much time it required for the market to trade to our levels, or not my, my levels, or our levels, to your level. You always want to talk in terms like you saw these things coming beforehand. You are absolutely lying to yourself in your journal when you're annotating your chart after the fact, but you're watching me call it live. You're borrowing my experience and then you're recording like you yourself saw it and you anticipated all these things. Everything that I just outlined here, you're anticipating that. That's how you're recording it. So I'm pleased that I saw this fair value gap support price and it only went down into it partially like I was expecting and it remained open. I'm satisfied that PDA rate performed as I expected it to. You see the difference what I'm doing there versus not wanting the journal because the reason why 90%, 99.9% of you, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to close this morning because we've accomplished what we were trying to do today. At least I'm satisfied with it. You might not be satisfied, but I'm satisfied. But 99.9% .9 of folks that are not trying to treat this as a business when you're running a business, anyone that does a business, like when I was managing a Domino's Pizza, and for some of you that don't know me, I, I did that. I was a Domino's Pizza delivery driver, and then I managed the branch in Middle River, which has closed down now. It doesn't even exist. I actually met my wife in that same store. <laughs> but you run a business with KPIs. Okay, and you run your business with models that tell you this is how your costs, you, your your costs for doing business need to stay in this range. So your costs for ingredients and your costs for overhead and hours work. So if you know that your business is slowing down, you get through that peak hour, whatever it is, you need to be able to know that, okay, this is normal fluctuations. Now we're outside the boundaries of when the highest form of volume comes in now we want to relax and trim our overhead send people home send drivers home and then not make up so many new pizzas right because they may not get sold as fast as you want them to well in trading you're going to discover with your own personal kpis and google kpis okay i'm not going to explain everything to you it's a simple procedure google it but it provides you a, a baseline for you, you incorporated, okay? 
you, the person listening to me, the trader that you're trying to become, that's going to be independently doing what I'm showing you here. You're a corporation. You're an enterprise. You're a, a Fortune 500 in the making. But you can't arrive there if you're lazy, if you're not taking consideration in how you manage yourself, how you think. You have no idea how to evaluate your baseline growth, your productivity as a student of the market, your efficiency using these tools, and how much mental capital are you spending? How much time are you worrying over these charts? And over time, you're going to see by doing what we're doing each day here, that mental capital will not be spent as much as it is when you don't have something like this, where you have someone with experience outlining what the market should do. If you don't have me, if you don't have someone else that knows what they're doing and they've coached you and they're doing it right with you, holding your hand saying, this is what should happen. It feels, I, I guarantee all of you felt really confident this morning. You might down, down deep down inside considered, he's probably been wrong here. I don't know, this feels a little bit weird, but you feel confident because I'm talking to you. You're watching the chart live. And subconsciously, you know, if I'm wrong, it didn't hurt you. You didn't make your public opinion. Well, your opinion public, rather. I am. I don't know how many people are listening to me and watching me live right now. I don't want to know. Because if I have that in my head, I'm going to start running ratios of how many of you are actually pushing the button taking the trade. So I don't want to do that. There's no chat window because I don't give a shit what people are saying. I don't care what your opinion is. So you want to have that in your journal. You want to filter out all of the negative all of the criticism you don't want to have any opportunity for you yourself to criticize what you thought you were going to see in price when you're tape reading or when you take your live trades if you ever decide to do so or your demo trades so you're recording in your annotations in your chart that are very succinct they're very specific to certain things that you were expecting and maybe you didn't expect it but while you're learning with me in these in these tape reading sessions things that you heard me say Trust me, you did not hear everything because you're worrying about maybe the trade you pushed that you shouldn't have gotten into, or you're just looking for the other reason why I'm wrong. Because there's people in here listening and watching, hoping and praying that this doesn't do what I said it's going to do so they can go on social media and troll. I'm denying them and I'm having a great deal of fun doing that. But you don't want to go into your annotations and not at least record the things from a perspective like you had already seen it coming. Now, why would you want to do that? Because at first consideration of that, on, on the face or surface of that, it sounds like, well, you're being disingenuous to yourself. You're lying. That's a bad thing. No, 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 no. This journal is not supposed to be shared to anybody else. So are you lying to anybody? No. Are you technically lying to yourself? Yes. But you're doing it with a purpose in mind. It's called positive self-talk. You need to understand the power of giving yourself positive suggestions. And by having a visual representation of price action, which is what you're activating in your reticular activating system, you're keying up on things that I'm pointing to you real time. You may not be able to see these beforehand. You may not have understood what it was on the chart before I actually pointed to it and showed you and talked about what was going to happen. But over time, what happens is, is your subconscious retains that and it really falls in love with it when you record it with positive self-talk, like you did it yourself. And then not just write it in your journal and then forget about it. You want to go back to it at the end of the week, in the weekend, and listen to your own words in the chart, reading it out loud, not reading it just in your internal voice, but read it out loud. You hear your own voice. Your own voice is going to replace mine over years. Right now, when you watch price action, you see certain things you're hearing Michael say, this is what the um, breaker does. This is what the fair value gap does. And you don't want to see this gap fill. You're hearing my voice. Over time, you will drown my voice out with your own by doing what I'm teaching you to do, which is independent thinking. That's what I want for all of you. I want that. I don't want you going through the motions and thinking like a robot because I'm programmed you. That's not, I'm only providing you ICT training wheels by doing this, but by giving yourself positive self-talk and never criticizing yourself, either audibly when you're in the market, if you do something wrong, if it runs on your stop or it starts going against you, never listen to me. I don't care how long you've been doing it. 
never, ever charge that atmosphere with negativity. The only thing you're doing is harmful criticism to yourself and your subconscious is a sponge. It's gonna retain that and it's gonna do damage that takes years and years to overcome, but you never get rid of it. I have all those same things that I suffered in my first six years. Many times when I put a trade on, I'm feeling those things well up again and I have to remind myself, they're all ghosts. They can't touch me anymore. I can choose to remember them and spend time sulking over that or I can say, yeah, that happened, but look where I'm at now. So I'm replacing it with what? Positive self-talk. Yeah, I endured that. Yeah, I got a scar from that, but I'm still here and I'm still able to do this, but I'm still able to do that. But look what I'm doing now and look how I'm doing this. And now I'm in front of all of you and you're all enjoying it. So it's a matter of just providing yourself a constant learning environment that is supportive. And you want to take your results to social media so the social media can do what for you? Coddle you, stroke your ego, tell you you're a good trader, you're good. How many likes do I have on my post? How many hearts do I have on my tweets? And you're attributing that as the baseline for your success. And that's bullshit. You want to focus on your own. Don't invite other people. Don't, imp don't even invite them to the ex experience of being able to criticize your results. Because if you invite them to do that, invariably, you're going to have some goober that doesn't even trade. They're going to say, oh, but I made 20 R today. And they have no receipts. They've done nothing. And they're only doing that because you have made them feel inferior. Trust me, there are live streamers right now looking at this today and they're looking at, oh no, ICT is going to be live streaming. I'm not in competition with any of you. I'm not in competition with none of you. I'm here to help. If I can help you, wonderful. If I'm not interesting to you, if it doesn't help you, don't, don't, don't watch me. I don't care about your opinion. I just want to know that I'm doing the right things for all of you. And I don't want you to invite the outward criticisms that some of you foolishly do. And I did this when I was on America Online. I presented myself in a way where I needed to be validated. I needed it when I was 20 years old. I don't need it at all now. I don't need that. I know this stuff works and you will too. But you want to have that positive support, not criticism when you're learning. You don't want to record it in your own journal through your own words. You don't want to open up a dialogue with other traders. And this is why trading partners, listen to me, listen. For folks that go on my timeline in Twitter or on my comment section, which I don't open up anymore on YouTube, you're asking, hey, is anybody want to be a trading partner and learn how to do ICT concepts together? You are absolutely asking for it to be harder than it needs to be. Because a mind that's divided or a subject matter that is of two mindsets, you're compounding the difficulty. You're absolutely making it harder than it needs to be. And it doesn't feel that way. You think it needs to be like in high school where you did the laboratory experiments in biology and chemistry. You had a lab partner, right? The only thing that did was teach you to be fearful and emotional about someone else's productivity over yours. You don't see it like that now, but that's exactly what that was. Anything of a divided mind or of two mindsets rarely ever comes together in agreement. Now, think about what you're doing when you're trading. You're looking at these candlesticks and you're manifesting the argument that you just had with your significant other the night before, the day before, maybe the separation. Maybe the fact that you didn't get a promotion at your job. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you realize you haven't spent as much time as you should have, like me, that's what I'm feeling, with your children, your wife. I have an anniversary coming up on the 14th. In my head, as I'm watching these candles, I'm thinking to myself, I have to make sure I'm punctual this morning if I promised her, I'm gonna do what I said I'm gonna do here, and then I'm gonna start preparing what we're gonna do on the 14th, which is also my son Cameron's birthday. So I have a lot of things on my mind. So I will not be in the live session after CPI. I'm only going to watch it with you and then that's it. I'm not going to trade it because I have things I have to take care of. And yes, I was married on Valentine's Day. Yes, my son was born on Valentine's Day. And it's also Valentine's Day. So I have three things lingering over me. 
So am I going to be able to focus? No, I'm not. And are you willing to make that decision also for your own trading and your learning? Are you comfortable with saying, I don't need to do this today because I have other things that are more important. They're in my life that I have to take care of. Because if I don't take care of it, it's going to be a factor that's going to be a, a festering wound that will draw my attention away from what I'm doing because of guilt, because of not doing what I should have done in my own personal life away from the charts. So there's a lot of management you have to do. You have to, you have to constantly manage the trader and you have to rely on a good analyst in you. And I'm teaching your analyst inside of you this real time. I'm teaching it. I'm walking it through. If the concepts don't work, folks, I'm going to fall on my face in front of you. You be the judge. Does the stuff work or doesn't it work? Does it repeat? Doesn't it repeat? Is there logic that seems to be re reoccurring each time that we sit down together? It's the same stuff that I was tweeting. And yes, I only tweet the wins because that's the only thing I've tweeted. Go back. There's no deleted anything. It's not bragging. When we sit down over, a, here's, sir, here's your quarter, third quarter uh, level. So that's been reached now. So it really should expand up and touch the top of that. I think that would be favorable. I'd like to see it happen and I can close this and go through my news like Jagger. <laughs> it's an inside joke. Boom, hello. Screenshot that. That's what it feels like. That's exactly what this will feel like for you when you know what you're doing, why price is going to do what it's going to do, and you're done. You don't care if it rips all the way up to 41.50. You don't care. You just close up shop, annotate what you want to annotate very thin in there, close your charts, walk away for about an hour. Enjoy that moment. Breathe it in right now. Just take this in right now. You literally watched price do exactly what you wanted to see it do. You can't get that feeling from watching a video. You can't get that experience by reading a book. You don't get the same experience when you have taken somebody else's signal as a trade because you know you didn't earn that. As much as you might be profitable doing it, you know in your heart of hearts that you did nothing to get that result except for copycat. And you know that sucks deep down inside because you wish you could do it yourself. And I understand. For some of you that can't do it, and you have to do that as an alternative, there's no shame in that. You know yourself. You know your limitations. All of us have our own limitations. I'm just saying that I could never live with myself like that. But they, I also know, because I've mentored a lot of people over the years, that there are some personalities that are just simply never going to be equipped to do this. Not everybody's going to be able to trade. Not every one of you listening to me and watching these things. When I stop doing the live sessions in the second week of November, it's probably going to feel like doomsday for you because you're going to not have that crutch, that, that training wheel. Listen, folks, I have trained hundreds of thousands of people, and there's more learning now. There are going to be more people out there that are going to learn how to do this exceedingly well, and they're going to make themselves available to you. They're not in business with me. I get no kickback. I don't want a kickback, okay? But they're going to run their own little signal services, and they're going to be able to do what you just watched me do here. I have students that can do this day in and day out. I have them. Not all of them want to do signal services, but some of them do. I've already given them the okay that they're well, they're, I'm, I welcome them to say, hey, look, I was trained by ICT, and I'm willing to sit with you 30 days and do what I'm doing right now for you. If they know how to do this, they'll do this for you. If they don't give you 30 days, one full month of showing you walking the walk forward, they are not my students and they don't know how to do this shit and they're lying to you. Because that's exactly what I told them. You need to be able to sit down because that's the litmus test. Because I'm not going to go out and co-sign your private information. I'm not going to say, oh yeah, Ryan Jones, is he's, he's a student of mine, he's doing a signal service. I'm not going to advertise for you. I'm not going to verify anybody for you. You are going to step out there and do what I'm doing. And that is reasonable. I think that, it, I mean, give me a give me a number one in tweets. Tweet number one to me. If you think that's a fair assessment for someone that's going to offer signals to you, they walk it forward, let you see what they're seeing in the price action, call it for a full month, four weeks, every single day show up. That's reasonable. Now, is that a, a industry standard where people blow their accounts in 90 days and all that stuff? Of course not. 
But you also don't want to be spending any time with any jokers out there that claim they've been trained by me or they know Enigma. <laughs> they don't. None of these people out there that say that. If they're saying anything Enigma, they don't know it. Okay. All you got to do is look at their live stream results and that'll show you they don't know Enigma. There's, there's levels to this. There is difficulty to this. There's also rewards to this. And where you go with it is all up to you. And I'm trying to do my best to be helpful in regards to you finding your own way through this. Also, removing a lot of the doubt, a lot of the bullshit that people say about me. This is something I never really wanted to do because it's personal. My observations over charts, I've always kept that guarded. I've never felt comfortable doing this. And in fact, I don't feel comfortable doing it. And even if I do this all the way throughout the year and it's a success, I'm still going to regret having done it because it's something I promised I never was going to do. So I want you to understand that this is something that goes against every fiber of my being. But I understand that some of you, maybe a lot of you, need this. And because this is my last year really going into public mentoring, I don't want to, and that doesn't mean I'm doing private mentorships for sale. I'm not doing that anymore. I don't want to do that. I want to be me. I'm going to go back to being me. Private Michael, you know, I want to be you know, the guy I was before I started teaching and people knew my name as much as they do now. I'm uncomfortable with it. So don't waste this opportunity. Do everything I'm telling you to do. Don't do the things I tell you not to do. If you do that, the results you're looking for, I promise you, you'll either get it by November or you'll be so close to it, a little bit of time on your own, you'll get it. I promise what you're looking for, I have it. The things that you thought that were not possible, I can do it. And I'm willing to prove it to you. I can sit with you every single day, and that's my intentions now. I didn't want to do more than two a week. It's beneficial for you to have this every day. So I'm going to do that each day. That I don't have to edit anything. If I say something wrong, and it's, you know, if I call something different in here and it's an error, you tweet to me and I'll tell you if I if it was in fact an error, and there it is. I, I can't edit anything. Once it's live streamed, it's on my YouTube channel. It is what it is. This is 2023 mentorship. Take it for what it's worth. Take from it what you think is useful. The things that are hardships to you that you can't find a, a place for right now, you might later on discover there, there is a place for it in your trade. You just can't observe it right now. And just keep grinding at it, okay? There's a nice run off here. Let me go up to a... Frame. I'm not going to use anything with the US 500 anymore. I'm going to close this in a second. I just want to see where we're reaching for. All right, there we go. So we have this, and now we have. This is your next area for a premium. So 4143, 41, 44 and a half, right in there. Everything beyond that, this is all balanced here. So there, only, there is only this small little inefficiency. And there's nothing of any interest until you get to buy side here. So just focus on that the rest of the day. That might be where we draw to. And if I was gonna trade the afternoon session and say we haven't gone up there by then, and we haven't really fully erased everything we've put in this morning. Uh, this will be an afternoon session, last hour trading day uh, objective for me. That's how I would treat that level. And I'm not saying that that's what you should try to draw, trade and do, but in your notes, have this in your charts, okay? And then annotate that and look and see if we have any reason for it to draw up there. And if we do, if there's nothing else beyond that that needs to be viewed as inefficient because it's been back and forth. So hopefully, you guys gleaned something useful this morning from all of this. And uh, I guess I'll touch base with you tomorrow morning until I talk to you then. I'll try to be more punctual. I apologize. Um, and I'll probably be a little bit early. probably be 9 o'clock tomorrow because I want to get a lot of the job any other way because I won't be with you. No, 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 no. I can't do that. I can't do that. i got to be ahead of the CPI number. So we'll probably be at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock New York local time. So that's when we'll do uh, Tuesday's live session.
I have to absolutely be done at 9.45, 10 of 10, because I have things I have to do with my family. So I hope that doesn't upset any of you, but it is what it is. I have a wife. She's my boss. <laughs> and until then, folks, be safe.